What's going on people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV. Um, I thought I'd do a video today. How can Unite Emery improve Arsenal? You know, it's the international break. We're all bored at the moment. So let's have a look at where I think we can improve things. First of all, um, is style of play. Um, we've heard a lot of complaints from Arsenal fans saying we don't know what we're watching. We don't know what the plan is, what he's trying to do. Are we tiki taka high press? Are we a counter-attack inside? Are we a possession-based team? He's in his second season, and for me now, you have to implement your style when you go to a new club. At Seville, you know, they used to play with good style of football. Um, he went to PSG, changed things slightly, but, you know, he didn't change them a great deal. And he's come to Arsenal now, and we're still trying to figure out what he wants to do. I think we can be a counter-attacking team, soak it up and then hit them on the break. You know, maybe we, the, we don't quite have the defence to do that. I don't think we're good enough on the ball to be a possession-based team. So maybe the high press as well. But give us a style of play that's more entertaining. We've got a very good front three at the moment, but we're not getting the best out of them. Um, I think you've got to get your two wide players higher up the pitch. When I'm looking at Pepe, you know, you made a huge investment on this guy. He's getting the ball too deep. He needs to be 15, 20 yards higher up the pitch, running one-on-one -on -one at fullbacks um, and causing more damage in and around the goal. Instead, this guy's coming back and getting the ball in his own half he, with his back to goal. He's got too much to do. You can't just sign a player, put him in the team and not help him by the way you've set up. We want to get the most out of him. People have been on Pepe's back. I actually think... There's a very good player there um, once he settles and if we use him in the right way. So, Unai Emery, give us a style of play that's entertaining, that's quick, that's sharp, that's attacking. We haven't got a great defence or a great midfield. Our strength is in our attack, so work around that. Give us a style of play that we can enjoy that will move us forward. You look at this team now, Leno, Tierney, Socrates, David Luiz, Torreira. Gwen Doozy, Ceballos, Pepe, all players signed by Unai Emery. So he hasn't got the excuse that this isn't my team. You sign these players. You should sign a player with a plan in place of how you want these guys to play, which is where the style of play comes back into it. You sign players to fit in with your philosophy. Klopp signed players that were built to press high energy, high tempo. Unai Emery has to do that and figure out how he wants to use these guys and get the most out of them. That's what good managers do. The next one is the formation. What is Arsenal's best formation? Is it 4-2-3-1? Is it 4-3-3? Is it 4-4-2? For me, the Aubameyang situation is one that we look at. Lacazette will be back um, after the international break. Does that mean Aubameyang then gets pushed to the left wing? One suggestion I have seen with a lot of people is can Lacazette play in the 10 and then we keep a Bamiyang central with maybe two wide players. Um, that is a, effectively four attacking players that does put a lot of pressure then on your midfield. So whether we've got that quality in midfield or not, I'm not too sure. But I don't like really seeing a Bamiyang push to the left, but maybe it's the only way it will work. As long as he's not too wide on the touchline playing as an out-and-out -out winger and you've got him sort of tucked in like uh, a left forward. So he plays close to Lacazette and then Pepe on the right tucked in as well close because what we will have after the international break is two fullbacks, two attacking fullbacks with pace in Tierney and Bellerin and hopefully those two guys push their wingers further up the pitch which then will give us a better shape more stability and more attacking fluidity and I think we will hurt teams more. Two other issues for me. One is the midfield which I think is personally maybe the weakest part of our team because one I don't think they protect the back four very well and I don't think they create very well for the strikers either. Um, Xhaka is going to be the mainstay in the team. We know this. Emery loves him. He's made him the captain. Whether you want him in the team or not, I'm not the biggest fan of him. But he's going to be in the team. So what we have to do is help him by the person next to him. Now, the thing is, our best midfielder this season has been Guendouzi. But I actually think Guendouzi and Xhaka doesn't work. Um, and I think when you play Xhaka, Guendouzi and Torreira in a three, 
we don't have the attacking qualities that we need to help the front line. So the crazy thing is, looking at it, is Gwendouzi the player we actually might need to drop? Um, not, not through any fault of his own. Um, he's been our best midfielder, like I said. Um, a manager told me a few years ago, your best 11 players isn't always your best team. And I think with Xhaka, he may need Torreira next to him for the defensive capabilities more than Gwendouzi next to him. When you play all three of them, I think we're too defensive. So maybe we have to go back to Xhaka Torreira that was our best pivot last season. I think gives us the most defensive protection than any other midfield pairing. Um, it's sort of what do you do with the third midfielder? Do you play Sabios? Do you play him in the 10 role, which I don't think he's as good as Meza Ozil in that role? Or do you play him as an eight box to box with attacking freedom? Or do you play Willock for his energy? So that's an interesting one. As I said, maybe even Lacazette number 10. Um, and then we've got the Meza Ozil situation. Um, a lot of people have got split um, opinions on this. I think Ozil has been a good signing for Arsenal, not a great signing. Um, at times I've been overwhelmed. I don't think he's dominated enough big games, but some footballers are built that you can just give them the ball and they'll do the rest. Players like Sanchez, um, Fabregas, just give me the ball and I'll do the rest. Meza Ozil, very much as, as good a player, as great a player as he's been, he relies on things around him, the defensive protection behind him and the attacking movement in front of him. He's not a player you just give the ball to and he'll just score you 20 goals. His assists are dictated a lot of time by the quality in front of him. I get that as well. But I think we are seeing a player deteriorating. As I've said, he only got two assists in the Premier League last season in a team with Lacazette and Aubameyang in front of him. Um, I think a lot of his best play happened when he had Sanchez in the team, when he had Santi Cazorla, who was kind of the guy who got the ball and gave it to him quickly in attacking areas between the lines. At the moment, with players like Xhaka, we haven't got that. Um, it's unfortunate because I think Sabayos and Ozil would have some sort of understanding because um, Sabayos does play the ball forward. So it's a shame we haven't seen them. I think they've just come to a decision that 350 grand a week in his third is not at his best anymore and two assists last season and you know questions about his attitude. I think the club are just going in a different direction. I think we have to understand it isn't personal. This is football. There's no sentiment in football. No one player is more important than the team. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a player to get the best out of the team. So that's another one. Um, but overall, you know, we're third in the league. We're one point behind Manchester City without even really playing that well. I think we played well for 20 minutes against Aston Villa with 10 men. We played well for 20 minutes against Tottenham um, at 2-0 down. But overall, I don't think we've dominated a Premier League game this season. But I'm hoping after the international break with the players returning, holding as well, maybe coming back into the defence. Me personally, if you are going to put him in, I'd play him next to Luiz. I think he has been better than Socrates with what he gives us on the ball as well. Despite those mistakes, I think he's growing. Um, you've seen the comments from Chambers saying how big an influence Luiz has been in the dressing room already and how likeable a character he is and his leadership qualities. Um, so I would actually, you know, if you are going to put Holding in, maybe put him next to Louise. But after the break, um, winnable games. Um, and we need to really establish ourselves now in this league if we're going to get top four. Emery can't put all his eggs in the Europa League basket. I think this year we have to get top four in the Premier League. With United's failings, Tottenham's wobble, the fact Chelsea lost Hazard, their best player without being able to replace him. I think we have to take advantage of that and get in the top four, maybe even third. So let's see what happens after the international break. Um, don't forget, there'll be more videos out in the international break. One or two um, big things in the pipeline at the moment as well, behind the scenes. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. What team would you pick? What formation? What kind of style of play does Unai Emery, um, what kind of style should he play that will get the best out of our team? And uh, I'll see you next time. Bless.